G'day and welcome back. For a little while now, I have mentioned quite a few times that I've wanted to put flood coolant on the lathe. And I've mentioned me mate Trevor, who he's come through with the goods and sourced me a, get rid of that, sourced me a filtration and pump system from a parts washer. Um, it all works. That's what we're going to use. We're going to use a 20 litre bucket with a lid on it, obviously. The biggest trouble I'm going to have is I've got to take the lathe off the stand, which is a pain in the ass. What I should have done when I set the lathe up is put elastic around the bottom of the, you know, where the lathe bolts onto the, the cabinets, but I didn't. So I'm going to have to lift the lathe, seal it all up, and then. Um, plunk it down and probably have to level it up again I guess but that's part and parcel of it this is going to be hopefully be a good thing that I can save the inserts a bit more yeah, as we all know they're not cheap but you've got to pay for quality and I want to save them and it hope hopefully it'll help with some better surface finishes too anyway that's what we're up to that's today's mission but Probably not going to be able to do much because the power company's <laughs> switching the power off in about 10 minutes for the day to do some line maintenance, but luck of the draw. And just like that, as I was about to get up off the chair, the power's gone out. I don't know what I'm going to do now. Probably go and grab the gas cooker out, boil a bit of water and have a cup of coffee. Okay, kettle's boiling in the background. I think I've got pretty much everything sort of like hunted around here to find everything I think I need. If that sounds right. Um, found a tap. Found two taps actually. If this one's crap, well I'll try this one. So I need to make an adapter. they quarter BSP. So this has to have two three female threads um, where to put that pinch so that'll go there and there and I'll be able to weld a piece of flat on here so I can bolt it to the lathe it's the plan behind that um, so I'm trying to build this for no cost like not buying nothing out of shops just sourcing everything that I've got here so we we'll go to the lathe and I'll make the fitting up. <laughs> so lever, face this off, um, lever mill, through hole, and tap it quarter BSP. I don't know whether it's just me or not, but these set of drills I've got here, they've got a, like a black coating on them. And you can tighten the chuck up as hard as you can get it, but they still want to slip on this black coating. It's just, it's as slimy as buggery. So, I don't know whether it's just the chuck, but I've tried them in a key chuck. Not, not a keyless one, just a normal key chuck. They do the same. Just seem as slimy as shit. It's thick when this stuff's cold, eh? It's a tapered fitting, so that'll fit in there just all right. Yes, turn it around. I'll do the same on the other end, but I won't bore you with that. That's what we ended up with. Just simple thread each end. 
full of crap. And I just give the outside a bit of a lick just because I could. So I've just got a bit of flat bar, drilled two holes in it that line up with two existing holes on the back of the saddle. Oops. And this is going to get this piece will get welded to that piece of flat and then I'll short this up obviously because it's a bit too long weld that to that jam the fitting in the end the hose can come off and go through the gap under the lathe here under the back backsplash so that's how that's going to work not long had this welder I'm still trying to work out all the settings on it But, uh, got that welded up. I'm just going to go and give it a quick coat of black paint because I ran out of blue. I'll go and slap a bit of that on. Okay, let's fast forward you guys an hour or so. Clean nearly all the crap off the lathe, lifted it up with the gantry, and gone around where all the feet bolt down, gone around with brake cleaner and cleaned it all off. I'm going to use some of this black RTV seal. And just put a ring around all the, the bolt holes, sit that end down, and lift this end up a touch. Do this tail stock end, sit it back down, bolt it down, and it should be right. So I haven't moved the um, bottom cabinets, so it'll probably need leveling again afterwards, but that's so be it. It's all bolted back down. Um, so I'll get the lower lathe back together now, get the cover back on the end, get all the tooling back in. And I've got a machine up, an adapter to put this hose on, this hose I had laying around the other old shed at the back. Get it on there down to the, the bucket. So it's, this is 19mm and the fitting out of the bottom is 5.8 so... Okay, so what I've got is a chunk of aluminium in the bottom, which just raises it up a bit. Put a hole in the lid, drain hose goes through. Got it wired into the power point. So it's just, yeah, turned on with the power point. It's the easiest way to do it. Um, I don't know if that's going to cause me any grief, this wanting to kick up all the time. I don't know what I'm going to do about that. Just have to wait and see, I guess. You know, it just sits in there like that. Fill her up with water and cool it. And... Oh, I've got to plumb the rest of it up yet. But, yeah, anyway. I'll get that plumbed up. Should be good to go. I end up pulling the backsplash off the back of the load just to make it a bit easier to get in and out and around. There's a pain now, so otherwise. Probably doesn't need it, but I'll put it on anyway. Not gonna hurt anything. See how that goes anyway, see if that taps any good or otherwise whether it pisses the water out everywhere I don't know. I can't remember much about that. 
pipe be alright. I might need to go and buy a new one, I don't know yet. And I just got to find a bit of hose now, have a hunt around, find a bit of hose that I can um, attach to the pump and to here. And then that job is complete. This hose, it's fairly thick stuff, like good quality stuff. So hopefully it'll handle up to some hot chips, but if it does melt through, I'll just have to work something out later on. See how we go. So I just fed that through the, the lid. Found another good old hose clamp. Won't stuff up like the new ones do. It pays not to throw crap away, eh? Hey? Right, that can all go in the drum now, and I'll put some coolant in there and fire it up and see if it's going to work. So I'm using the Hangster for 5030. Um, that's the same as I use in the Cincinnati. Got six litres of water. This bucket. This is all it gets used for, hence why it's all greasy hand marks when I'm changing the coolant and everything out. That's all it's used for is for mixing coolant. So six litres of water, I'm mixing it 10 to 1. I do have a um, refractor meter. I will check it once it's cycled through. And the uh, refractor meter that I've got, it's got to show around 2.4 on the refractor meter, refractometer, whatever you want to call them. But I'll get that mixed up, I'll get that in the drum, and then give it a good pump through, and then I'll, you know, I'll check it and add what I've got to add to bring it up to the right level, concentrate. And then all I gotta do is put that, there's that plate back in the, um, between the two, two cabinets. I've just been in editing this video and the last bit of editing, last bit of videoing I'd done showing it working was pretty crap footage. So I'll show you that yeah, it, it runs, it works. I was a bit worried about that pump when I looked inside that box. The pump isn't very big at all, but the reason I like it is it had that filtration system so this wolf ain't going to get into the impeller of the pump which is what i really liked about it. that's why i decided to use that whole box but i just got it hooked up you can hear it running there you may not be able to hear it's pretty quiet but christmas beetle mongrels that's the flow we got it's not bad flow you can just dribble it if you want to just dribble it that tap's actually not a bad tap or you can get it coming out pretty fast if you like Tap does weep a little bit around that stem, but geez, I'm not worrying about that. But now the reason I like this Hangster's 5030 coolant is it's transparent. So on the mill, or even on the lathe now, if you got a scribe mark or a texture mark you're working up to, like a Sharpie mark or whatever, you can actually see through this coolant. It's not snow white like that other. You know, like, I used to use Penrite, and um, it used to evaporate really fast. But this Hangster is 5030, it doesn't seem to evaporate, and you know, the, the biggest thing I like is that you can see through it, it's transparent. So, 
there we go it works and um, I'm pretty stoked how often I use this setup I don't know I may not use it a lot I may only just use it for the you know but when I'm taking real heavy cuts keep the tool cool like it's going to be messy but so be it anyway we've had a win and this whole project has cost me nothing um, big thanks to Trev for giving me that pump set up um, and the rest of the stuff I just had floating around here which is absolutely fantastic I like when you can build stuff you know that costs you nothing <laughs>